finished with S Senator Amy Klobuchar and also Congressman Bad Finstead, both here today. Thank you both for being here, especially to watch the impact in my hometown now. And, you know, one thing that we went over as we were over by the Minnesota River earlier, that's one of my favorite walking spots to go to. Yeah. And as both of you were there earlier today, you saw it is completely underwater. You can see the tops of the trees just sitting there. When you see something like this happening, especially in our area like this or across all the, across the state, what is something that surges through your head, starting with you, Senator? Well, um, as Congressman Finstead knows, uh, my in-laws actually live in Mankato. I just checked with them. They're on Mulberry, so luckily they're way up. I think everyone thinks about their families and they think about a community and the other thing I think about is how we can make sure that everyone's safe and the local leaders have done an incredible job of getting information out to people. Um, Excel is working around the clock not only protecting their substation but getting those 600 people online that lost their uh, electricity near the dam. You also have our work, which is to make sure that everything's documented and we want to see what's happening and what you saw so we can go back to Washington and say, hey, this meets the thresholds for federal. This is over 10 million dam in damages statewide and the Blue Earth County meets the threshold. So let's get that federal funding in. 75% of the public infrastructure damage can be paid for federally. So that's our job. So I think about first emotional like everyone else about your house, your business. Then I think about our incredible spirit of the people working on this. And then I think about how are we going to fix this. Thank you for that, Senator Klobuchar. And then Congressman Finstead, for you as well, same question. When you're seeing that river rise the way that it has over there, what is something that runs through your head? I mean, goodness, the power of Mother Nature, right? I mean, to see the power in the river right now. But also, you, you can't help but see the spirit of just neighborly love that we have in southern Minnesota. I mean, I have seen heroes all day today, folks that have been working for four days straight, uh, just nonstop working to make sure that their communities are protected, that we have the opportunity to save homes, to save businesses. You know, the folks that are out here, you know, filling sandbags right now, we're seeing it all over southern Minnesota. And so you just can't help but but feel, again, the emotional responses. You know, this is going to take a lot of work to recover from this, and it's going to take all hands on deck. But you also have that very hopeful response of, you know, we can do it. We can do it in southern Minnesota. We've gotten through some tough things before. I'll count on my neighbors any day, and I'll put them up against anybody in this country any day to uh, recover from this. Congressman Finstead, another thing that you said just a couple moments ago, too, is how there is still hope. People are still finding that here when they go out and do the sandbags or when they just go out and help their neighbor get a sump pump in their basement. When you see something like that happen, what does that make you feel about the communities around southern Minnesota? I'm reaffirmed every day why my family has chosen Minnesota to be a home, why I'm proud to be a fourth generation resident raising the fifth. I see it every day. I see it in my neighbors. But when you have events like this, you can't help but see that hope and, and see that, all right, this is it's that farmer mentality almost that is so ingrained in Minnesota's heritage, right? It's like this is a really, a really tough time, really big challenge in front of us. I guess we're just going to have to roll up our sleeves and figure out how to get through it. And I'm seeing that over and over again, whether it's, you know, towns like Jackson, Medelia, Butterfield, St. James, Wasika. We, we've had the opportunity to tour these communities today, and we just the story is repeated over and over again. Thank you for that response. Senator Klobuchar, I want to ask you another question as well. Over at the Rapidan Dam right now, the water is moving fast. It is piling up with extreme water levels and debris. There is a home that is on the bridge of falling yeah. down with all the water right now. When you see something like that, and a bunch of people see something like that, they're scared right now. And one thing that you had said earlier is keep your receipts, and we can fix that, and we can find the federal funding. What are other things that you hope that many Minnesotans can take away, especially in those rural communities that will be impacted first? Well, I think the first thing immediately is to keep watching the news, stations like yours, uh, keep looking at the alerts from the county and the city to make sure you got accurate information. Because even though it looks frightening, right now Mankato is not under evacuation. Some people in North Mankato are. So you want to make sure you're listening to the right things. The second thing is these things change quickly, and we have to accept that. we got to listen to what the police, fire, tell us to do. Because sometimes you're like, why is that road blocked off? I want to go down there. That just happened in a town um, in southern Minnesota, and they lost their car. Luckily, they didn't lose their lives. So those are kinds of things you got to listen to things. And then I think about the infrastructure. We've been investing more and more in infrastructure. we got to keep doing it. Um, and, you know, Brad and I are doing this together, Republican and Democrat, um, doing this together to make the point uh, that there's no such thing as a Republican flood or a Democratic flood, um, and that in Washington we're going to work together to make sure the funds are there to help people through this time. 
One last question for both of you. Either one can answer or as well both of you. You know, we're talking about the federal funding that we want to see come in through our state. How quickly can people expect that to come in? Is this necessarily something that will be quick or will they have to be patient and wait for the laws to settle in? Well, it's my hope that we can move quickly. Uh, you know, the, the, the storm is still developing here, right? So we're still seeing recovery. We don't even know for sure what we are fixing yet. So, I mean, I would just say calm, cool heads will prevail on this. Senator Klobuchar and I have already made some calls to, to our colleagues in, the, in Washington to let them know that, hey, this is happening. Stand ready to help us. And everyone has, uh, you know, extended a hand of, yeah, we'll, we're going to be there and, help it, and helping you and your communities when it's time to help. And Mankato actually has money in reserve for these kinds of emergencies to start the public repairs uh, while we await the federal and state funds. So, again, um, already the damage appears to be there so that that would trigger the 75 percent federal funding, 25 percent state for the public infrastructure damage. We're waiting for that declaration. That's why we say save your receipts. Thank you, Senator Amy Klobuchar and Congressman Brad Finstead for joining me today and coming and seeing the impact that really is here in Mankato. Appreciate your time. Sending it back over to you in the studio.